so the recording is on right okay so i welcome all the participants like nikhil said so like uh, i think we had some more than 2000 plus registrations for this course and surprisingly not even i think you know 100 people have joined for the last day so that what you know that's what uh, reflects like how people might be interested or are interested or they are like in actually you know in actual or in real sense you know they want to understand something maybe or they want to interact for something good maybe right but nevertheless uh, we have you know some handsome amount of people i must say some good amount of audience because as i was just glancing to the participants i see that uh, all those people who are there today that is for the last day of this uh, like just a refresher course which uh, the uh, pa members have been telling you all about it right so i have seen a consistency in those people so i think if i'm not wrong uh, most of them have joined uh, right from day one till today right and let me tell you uh, the internship uh, which is scheduled from 28th of this month if i'm not wrong right so correct me if i'm wrong again so uh, we have a lot to offer in that regard right because even last year also we had the same program and before that also we had the same uh, program so we did have a lot many participants and there was a contrasting reach in terms of information and discussion uh, so whatever topics we are discussing now or let's say whatever topics we have discussed so far right so it's not just, just that means we'll just be touching upon the topics rather we'll be having a detailed explanation or let's say we'll be having a detailed discussion on the topics and much more topics are there uh, in all those 45 days or so whatever uh, number of duration you are having there right so let's see if suppose the same people or the same participants if they join in this internship session then definitely it will be a boon for them because uh, the COVID situations are still on a dynamic phase. It has not settled down, nor it has uh, risen up, right? So uh, if it's possible, if it's feasible for everyone, uh, keeping in consideration of the time and the schedule and also the engagements and commitment, then definitely do give a try uh, joining the upcoming sessions. Right. So today uh, I'll be discussing on two left out topics, which again is considered uh, as very important, as very important uh, in topics in the oil and gas industry yes although disregarded at many common instances but then again uh at those uh, topics which we shall be discussing today that will be just two however so one is uh, the health safety and engineering standards and other is all about data that is uh, data analytics and not data science but i am talking about data analytics Yes. So, but then again, many of you uh, might, uh, you know, synonymously consider data analytics as data science, but then again, uh, there holds a lot more differences, right? So I'm just giving you the hint. I'm just giving you, I'm just showing you the tip of the iceberg just now uh, so that you can check it for yourself as well. How data science varies from data analytics, right? So these are the two topics uh, which we felt that it is also necessary in the oil and gas industry. And indeed it is necessary because when you're talking about the oil and gas industry, uh, it's an occupational hazard that we're talking right now right so what happens in the oil and gas industry is so maybe you might have you know come across such kind of discussions so it is having a risk and it was also paying you well right so it's a high risk a high pay job right so that is the reason why each and every member or let's say each and every employee of the oil and gas industry they are they are expected to have a sound knowledge on the uh, health safety and the work environment uh, standards yes so that is why a person who does not qualify all the uh, requirements or let's say all the criterion of the hsc standards he or she might not be uh, provided exposures in the, uh, you know, the in the offshore locations, let's say, or let's say in some, you know, technically challenging uh, locations. And if you're not uh, up for those kind of challenges, if you're not uh, for those kind of uh, posting, job postings, or let's say uh, job environments, then definitely uh, the growth phase uh, as a professional in the oil and gas industry, that too gets hampered. Yes. So uh, a handsome pay, let's say uh, a luxurious pay if i may say again so that is only uh, that can be only seen when you are exposed to various working conditions when you're exposed to uh, uh, offshore and onshore conditions and also various complications where, when you are dealing with this uh, different working locations 
right so if you just see at this particular picture so like uh, i i'll just try to restrict this uh, discussion uh, uh, you know uh, means i'll just uh, try to cut it short as much as possible i'll try to do that right so that since this is the last day and that two days a weekend so i don't want to hold you all for long and i want to give you back the time as much as i can but then again if discussion persists then definitely time shall be consumed so for that again i am very much sorry uh, beforehand so if you can look at this picture, if you can just see, that means uh, there is a wildfire that has taken place. Yes, yeah? so definitely uh, it's in between the ocean or let's say in between some vast water body, right? So uh, definitely one question will generally arise. It will definitely come into the minds of each and every person that who might be responsible for such kind of events right is it some uh, natural activities is it some you know uh, machinery failure is it some mistakes that are being made by the personnel or that are being made by the humans right sorry so uh, i think this should be this uh, disregarded all right so just don't pay attention i think this slide has not been changed if i'm not wrong but nevertheless so uh, the answer to the uh, previous scenario is this so whenever there are incidents in the oil and gas industry, so hardly there are incidents which are happening due to some natural phenomenon or which are happening due to some natural hazards, right? Then unsafe conditions, that means unsafe working conditions uh, contribute uh, to a good extent, but then again, it's the unsafe acts, that is the intentional activities from the personnel, from the humans, or let's say from the employees, which gives rise to such kind of drastic events. Right. So at the end, what we can now realize or understand is that means it is the humans, that is, it is uh, us itself who is responsible majorly for all sorts of incidents, you know, that might possibly take place in the oil and gas industry. And that is the reason why you require a sound understanding or let's say a sound approach for the HSC practices. Right. So I think everyone might have watched this movie Deepwater Horizon, if I'm not wrong. If not, then definitely since uh, it's a weekend now. Right. So try uh, watching this movie. You will be able to learn a lot of things. You will be able to understand and comprehend a lot many things. Yes. How come means how, you know, the different uh, attitudes or let's say the professional attitudes or the work approaches, you know, how the differences in those kind of approaches, you know, it leads to a massive incident. Right? And how that incident ends up, you know, being a drastic turn of events for a very reputed company that is the British Petroleum. Yes. Because this particular well, uh, it was uh, drilled for the British Petroleum by one of the major drilling contractors that was the Transocean Limited, right? So this is a very good movie, yes? So you might have come across this movie. Then again, if you want to just refresh it, then definitely do watch it again. I'll, that, that's what I'll suggest to everyone, yes? So all these events, be it in the onshore, be it in the offshore, what it gives rise to is, you know, a good volume of oil spills. And when oil spills occur, so there's a destruction of uh, man and animals and, and all the living uh, ecosystem that is surrounded, that is being surrounded, uh, you know, that is being surrounding the oil and gas operational sites. You can see that birds, not only these pelicans, uh, there are other birds, uh, you know, which, you know, uh, undergoes, you know, massive devastation. Because you see, you're talking about crude oil now, which is very much viscous, which is very much dense as well, right? And just imagine now, if, if you are having some stains of oil in your hand, uh, you have to take help of, you know, uh, detergents or let's say surface, surface active agents or the hand washes or the soaps. Right. So just imagine now when there are crude oil, which is very much viscous and you can just imagine what would be the condition of this particular poor fellow here. Yes. Now, the only problem from this animals is they will be speaking in their own language, but we won't be able to understand. Had it been a man in this uh, instead of this particular bird and had it, I mean, you know, had been this man, you know, all you know, it means he was all covered with stains of crude oil, then what would have been the case? And just imagine if there's a small fire that was nearby this particular man who was all covered with crude oil, then definitely you can just imagine what would be the uh, outcomes, 
right? And finally, if you are not able to attend to the needs of such poor animals or such poor fellows, or let's say these conditions of oil spills, then definitely this gives rise to deaths of organisms, deaths of the living uh, lives. Yes, so that is the devastation of the ecosystem that we are uh, looking here. Yes, so animals and mammals as big as whales, you can just imagine how big uh, whales are. Yes, so there are a lot many uh, channels uh, related to you know the uh, uh, mammals, uh, whales as well, dolphins, uh, sharks. Yes, so those channels, uh, you know, which which uh, targets uh, the spotting of whales. Uh, by looking at those videos, you can just imagine how big, how, how huge those whales might be. Yes. So those kind of huge mammals are also facing extinction. They are also dying because of the mistakes that are being made by the humans. Right. So we are to be blamed. Right. And these accidents, what happen is they don't, they just don't happen on its own. They are being caused. That means we are itself responsible. So that is, it is an intentional act that means that, you know, uh, that is being uh, happening. Yes. So this is like a domino effect then again. So one set of incident leads uh, or gives rise to, let's say it is leading to another sets of uh, incidents or activities. Right. So not only is the operational site devastated, but also the surrounding community, let's say also the surrounding uh, environment that is existing, that is also getting affected. Yes. Then again, when there are some major incidents, let's say the entire supply chain is also being affected. Right. So let's just try to understand how such kind of accidents might occur. Right. So you are working there, right? Who who was working in the worksite? Maybe today you are not feeling well, but then again, sorry, uh, you are, you are not feeling well, but then again, what you do is you just think that means maybe if I take the leave, then you might be missing out, you know, some uh, benefits from the company, let's say, or let's say there might be some kind of salary that that would be deducted, let's say, right? Or that may, or let's say you have just disregarded your, uh, you know, your ailing health. Yes, thinking that means uh, that shall go away, that shall soon pass. But then what happens is uh, it, it hampers your coordination skills, it hampers your decision making skills, right? Then what happens is that leads to some kind of falls, yes? So you end up making some of the other mistakes because in the oil and gas sites, what you require is you require physical strengths, yes? Not only the mental strength, but also physical strength is required. Yes. So when you're physically fit, when you're physically rigid, then definitely you would be able to work for a longer span of time. Yes. And also what we're dealing here is we are dealing here with decisions here. Yes. So one wrong decision will definitely give rise to a some kind of unfortunate events. Right. Then finally, what shall happen is there will be an accident that might take place. Maybe uh, you were weak because of which you are not able to tighten a screw up to that extent or let's say up to that particular limit which, uh, up till which it was supposed to be tightened. Yes. So you, so you in a way, it, it's kept loose, right? So because of that particular screw, maybe there has been certain leaks from that particular part of the pipeline network. Let's just say, yes. And why I'm taking about talking about the leak because the pressure in such cases in the oil and gas industry it is very much high, right? So we're dealing with some high pressure. So if in, as soon as there are some leaks and there's a high pressure, so just imagine means what would be the condition, what would be the you know the expected scenarios that might take place. And then finally, what shall happen is there would be an outcome. And the severity might vary. Yes, it might be a severe incident that might be impacting the entire operations. Or maybe, you know, if luck turns out to be in your side, then maybe the severity might be low, which can be contained easily. Yes, that means the incident can be controlled. It can be contained very easily. But then again, you can just imagine now how uh, such an activity or let's say such a wrong decision can hamper the entire operations or let's say jeopardize the entire operations. And on the worst case scenarios, this will definitely give rise to injuries as well. So that is also something which you should keep in mind. Right. 
So whenever you come across a, a situation whereby you feel that something is not right, yes, something is not right, be it some kind of working conditions or be it some kind of, you know, your, your own physical health, let's say. So what you do is you have to first decide, you have to, you know, give a pause, you have to wait for some time. You have to observe the scenarios. You have to look for yourself as well. Yes, you have to think. You have to consider the greater benefit of the operations. It's not about a selfish act. It means act now. That means uh, if I'm to take some leave, then definitely you know my my salary might be deducted. Maybe or like say my leave might be get uh, you know it might be utilized. Yes. So I was saving 20 days of leave uh, for having a vacation with my family somewhere good. Right. But uh, if I'm to take a leave today, then definitely one day of my holiday vacation would be, you know, uh, wasted and maybe to cope up that uh, that day, which is being lost because of my illness. So for that, I have to lose one day of salary as well. So those things has to be put aside. Yes. So personal gains and personal benefits have to be put aside and you have to think about the overall safety. If it is some kind of uh, processes uh, which might be, you know, uh, disturbing you, which might, uh, which you might feel that means something is not right. So you have to observe those kind of scenarios. Yes. So that instinct has to be in your mind. Yes. So uh, you should not be shellfish. Yes. Uh, let's say uh, someone as uh, someone else was performing the job. Let's say, and you have you know witnessed that there is there might be some kind of issues. But let's say you have you have thought it uh, as that means uh, why should I bother? Why should I care? If I means if that particular person have undergone that kind of job, so he or she should be responsible to inspect it to uh, look at it. I shall carry on with my own uh, sets of uh, responsibilities that are bestowed upon me. No. So highlighting those kind of events, or let's say highlighting those kind of loopholes, or let's say acknowledging uh, means your mistakes, or let's say your shortcomings uh, won't bring you down. Yes, rather it will be, you know, preventing any kind of unwanted events uh, that might toll up to some huge losses, be it to life or properties. So at the end, what you should do is you should definitely report whenever you come across such kind of, you know, uh, events or activities or instances whereby you feel or let's say whereby you have this gut instinct that means something is not right. And, and that is how you would be able to recognize the hazards that are existing in the oil and gas industries. Now you see there are two persons here. Yes. So this two person, you can, as you can see from the picture itself, something is wrong. Right. So they're handling the boxes, let's say. Right. But what's happening is uh, this particular person as well, as you can see, this person is not uh, having a good, better grip. And also this person which is holding this box, this box is also not in the appropriate uh, orientation or it's not in the uh, correct uh, position. Right? So definitely all the contents of this box might fall out. And if this happens, then definitely there is some kind of, you know, incidents and accidents that might be uh, giving, uh, you know, uh, giving a way to. So, so a lot of many things comes up. So now if you see in this particular picture now, right? So I'm just circling it so that you have this hint. All right. Sorry. So sorry. So if the chat is open, then definitely you people can write in the chat box that what is wrong with this particular picture. Yes. So I give you some time to think. A time is in like uh, one minute time only because it is very much distinct if you're able to identify, if you're able to look for the issue that uh, this picture represents. Yes. So you can just uh, write it in the chat box if you feel to attempt. So, yes, if you feel to write so. Right. So uh, there is a potential harm. There's a potential incident, you know, that might take place. And this is a life changing event uh, for that particular person or let's say for any kind of personnel uh, who comes into such kind of scenarios. Okay, I'm moving ahead. So in the meantime, if suppose you find anything suspicious or anything, you know, which is, you know, acceptable or let's say, which is uh, debatable or, you know, which, which can be discussed, you're free to write in the chat box, right? So if I'm not wrong, the chat box is open. So you can, uh, you, you can, you can write there, right? Anyways, so here you see that there are three person here, there are three people here, yes. 
so uh, in this case so uh, whenever you are dealing with this uh, oil field equipment uh, you should not think yourself uh, you know as a what to say now uh, who was uh, the strongest person now here so we have hulk if i'm not wrong yes so if you're marvel fan then you have means don't think yourself as a hulk right? so who can carry or who can lift up any kind of things yes uh, because those are some kind of you know fictional things that are being shown in the movies right but you have to come down to your senses so you you, you can't just compromise your physical health you just can't compromise your uh, your your backbones uh, so so that's why you don't you don't want to see yourself you know just like uh, professor uh, charles javier or let's say professor x who you know uh, dedicates his uh, rest of his life in a wheelchair yes so uh, that's why uh, there's also a famous saying, by the way, I think if, I, if I'm not wrong in India. So there was a famous wrestler by the name Gama, right? And uh, the uh, mountainous uh, region of Jammu Kashmir and Himachal, whereby you have lot of mountains. So what we refer them as the, uh, we refer them as the land of Lamas, right? So there's a saying that don't be Gama in the land of Lamas. Right, uh, don't be gamma in the land of lama. So uh, that means uh, you should not be showing off. That means okay, fine. Means uh, you are going to the gym. Let let's say lifting some hand one fifty kgs of weights. So definitely this particular instrument that is, or let's say this particular tool that is the slips. So it you you can well you know lift it or lift it up on on your own. So you need not help. You need not need help from the other people. But in the longer run, what will happen is that will be crippling you. Yes, so there will be spinal injuries, and later on that will be crippling you for it means uh, for the rest of your lives. Yes, so those things uh, will also keep in mind. Right. So, if I'm to just conclude uh, the uh, you know the activities or let's say the offerings or let's say the need or the the necessity of health safety environment. So what it uh, aims is that means uh, it aims at you know highlighting or let's say it aims at imparting the sense uh, among people that means uh, what we should do is uh, we should be able to identify and fix the hazards yes so that no accidents occur in the future yes? so the future is free from any kind of incidents or you know or some unwanted scenarios unwanted events right also you should also impart this sense. You should also impart this, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, health safety and uh, means and means uh, imparting a good uh, work environment uh, to the other peers as well. So that is also something which you should keep in mind. Okay. Now, okay. I'm just looking at the answers uh, which uh, people have written. Uh, okay, so just hold on. I'm just I'm just going through the answers by the way, all right. So please don't mind. Okay, so if I'm not wrong, everyone has you know got the uh, gist of that particular image. Yes, so they are able to uh, get the uh, idea that what 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 was the incident that was being highlighted. Yes, so so just imagine now, uh, if suppose you um, at times I think many of you might have experienced that whenever you are closing a door or let's say whenever you are closing a window, maybe your fingers have got stuck there, maybe your fingers have got snapped there. Yes. So just imagine how hard it might feel. Yes. So what, what the agony of that particular pain. So, and that is just a small incident there. Yes. But just imagine when that person is, uh, means his hand is stuck in between the pipes. So maybe there, there what, what, what the outcome will be. The outcome will be nothing, but it will be some, you know, amputation activities that needs to be done. Yes. So I guess you all know what is amputation is. That means you have to cut off a particular part of your body because uh, it's no longer responding or let's say it's no longer uh, alive. It's dead. 
and this amputation happens mostly for those people who are exposed to the frozen climates especially those people who are living or let's say who are uh, going to the uh, mountains uh, the snow covered mountains yes so those person you know mostly uh, they they undergo amputations apart from them uh, people you know uh, who undergo severe accidents yes so after which you know there a uh, particular or let's say a specific part of the body is not responsive in such cases amputation might be an option because that become or else becomes a burden for that particular individual yes now the second and let's say the last uh, topic uh, which i feel is necessary for uh, for all of this uh, participants who have joined us yes and uh, similar topics which would be discussed i think in in the coming days of this internship programs is uh, data analytics sorry yes so why data analytics is important because uh, when you're talking about the oil field so we have operations of 24/7 into 365 days if i'm not wrong yes so the oil field people they don't have uh, holidays like weekends uh, or let's say uh, public holidays state holidays fixed holidays optional holidays if i'm not wrong yes because the field is never kept in a shut in condition all the wells no matter be it the injector be it the producer be it the you know the uh, the observer well all of the wells are being you know uh, are being monitored and operated continuously uh, until and unless uh, you have some kind of well intervention activities or let's say some kind of you know uh, work over activities because of which the operations or let's say the recovery or the injection of the fluids has to be suspended right now since uh, we have a continuous stretch of uh, operations going there so definitely it is understood that we we will be having you know a good stream or let's say a long sets of data and information that would be sent to the, to the uh, data servers or to the data centers yes now from those data let's say uh, for one particular day there are some 100 data sets that is being sent that is with fed into the data center and just imagine that means for how many days a particular well might be in operation yes so all those data what we will be doing we definitely what we have to do is we have to assess we have to analyze and most importantly you have to understand what those data are trying to uh, indicate because accordingly what we'll be doing is we will be putting up to some uh, good use we will be uh, making we'll be playing with those data and then finally what we'll be able to do is we will be able to come out with some acceptable outcomes we'll be able to come with some kind of estimations we'll be able to come with some certain kind of uh, plans by which you know uh, if decisions are taken then definitely uh, the efficiency or let's say the effectiveness of the operations can be uh, looked after so that is why data analytics is you know is on a is on a rise now yes alongside with data science however right and also also now suppose you are an analyst by nature let's say yes or let's say if you are let's say any kind of uh, person any kind of designation who is looking only after the data so the way you are understanding and you are perceiving things um, similar in the similar fashion uh, people in the higher authority might not be perceiving the things yes so you have thousand data sets now uh, people in the higher management they don't have that much time to to go through each and every 100 data sets so what your role would be your role would be to come up with certain tools and mechanisms by which you know the information all the information is you know highlighted all the information is uh, brought up in such a way that it is very much compact it is very much concise and at the same time it is it is well understood by the people who have no knowledge of how those data has been put into use in such cases we refer those operations or let's say we are refer those efforts as data visualization that means how uh, the thousand data sets you are having how thousand data sets has been put into good use and then you have represented the thousand data sets in terms of let's say a pie chart in terms of a bar graph in terms of some kind of you know some uh, comparative mechanisms or let's say in kind of some kind of dashboards as well some real time monitoring as well Yes, so that is how people are going to understand. 
so if suppose there's an investor let's say and if you're giving a present to the investor uh, or let's say if you're giving a presentation to any of the uh, let's say any 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 common person any any layman person who is not uh, who is not at all from the oil and gas background and also not at all from the data analytics background or you know uh, the uh, data research background so you can uh, go through each and every data points that is has a hundred data points and make him understand so like he definitely he won't be having that much time and also he won't be having that much of patience you know to to analyze to scrutinize each and every thousand scenarios so rather he will be expecting something which is very much you know productive for him yes yeah, something which is very much com concise and compact so that it is well understood and it is easily understood right but then again, in order to bring up such kind of activities and information into a common lot, into a very simple, uh, simple approach, there lies, you know, massive tasks. Yes. So you see that you shall be having a data set which are scattered all together. Right. And then gradually what we'll be doing is uh, we will be using, uh, utilizing your analytical skills. That means that is where the data analytics plays a major part. Yes. And then finally, what will be coming up with this, you'll be coming up with a refinement of these data sets, whatever you were working since uh, the inception. Yes. Scattered data, which is being uh, put into a, a uniform set of approaches. And finally, the outcome is completely a polished sets of informations. Right. So that means you are having data. Now you, you will be having the valuable insights into the data. You will be understanding what those data sets are trying to, you know, indicate. Yes. Uh, or let's say what uh, might have led to such kind of data that was being reported. And finally, what you'll be having is you will be able to come up with certain or let's say lot many actions and strategies by which, you know, you would be able to transform the existing sets of operations. Yes. So that is where the data analytics part is very much important for a person. And this data analytics, to be very honest, I must tell you, it doesn't require any kind of, you know, uh, prerequisite degrees, let's say. Only interest is required. And interest, why? Because uh, there are certain, you know, activities and engagement that requires time and patience, because of which many people uh, at the later end, they back out. But then again, trust me, if suppose uh, you are into this analytical mindset or let's say this business analytics mindset or let's say the research mindsets uh, who are looking into data, then definitely I think no one can replace you because analysts nowadays are playing a major role. They are, play, they are playing a crucial role in the success of the company's uh, you know, uh, market insights. Yes. So let's say if suppose uh, I give you a company, uh, British Petroleum, let's say, and if I'm giving you uh, the production uh, operations to look into, then you will be coming across or let's say you will be entertaining such kind of data, data and information that later on uh, the uh, insights that, that shall be provided by you will be something, you know, which is out of the box. Right. So uh, then again, a lot many challenges comes up, however, because uh, data is never ever it is uniform. So it's not a mainstream uh, or let's say it's not a perennial uh, source of information that has been reported. Yes. So manipulation does happen. Then there are data gaps as well. So because of which you have to go ahead with interpolation and, and, and extrapolation activities here as well. Right. So that is why patience is required, like I said. So there are a lot many uh, softwares as well in, in order to understand such kind of scenarios, right? So uh, like means if suppose it interests you uh, means much, then definitely you can look for options which are there in the internet. There are a lot many professional courses like Udemy is there, uh, Course Era is there, right? So which are offering this uh, some quality courses as well. Yes, if you want to make a mark, if you want to establish yourself or let's say uh, set foot into a new uh, professional challenge that, that that is the data analytics part. Right. So uh, with this, I conclude uh, all the uh, interactions and discussions that we had uh, for